On 14th March 2015, the world head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, the fifth Khalifa, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, delivered the keynote address at the 12th National Peace Symposium hosted by the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, UK. The event was held at the Bethel Fatum Mosque in London with an audience of more than 1,000 people, including non-Ahmadi guests comprising government ministers, ambassadors of state, members of both houses of parliament, and various other dignitaries and guests. A special guest this year was Professor Hainer Bellefeldt, the UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion or Belief. The theme of this year's Peace Symposium was Religion, Freedom and Peace. The influence of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat in promoting peace in more than 200 countries and through its aid organization Humanity First in combating poverty and disease in the developing world is immensely valuable. And it's a matter of great pride to all of us that the International Centre of the Al Jamaat is here in the UK. We're grateful to Your Holiness and your followers for the huge contribution you make to the welfare of humanity and the example that you set for the rest of us. What also impresses me most about the Ahmadiyya Muslim communities in this country in particular is loyalty to Britain and integration. For that reason, I consider Ahmadis to be a great example to other faith groups of what can be achieved through faith, commitment and interreligious dialogue. In these days of discussions around how we can tackle extremism, how we can make sure that as a, an entire community we work together, from my perspective, the work that the Ahmadiyya community does uh, not just in important evenings like tonight, but more broadly on a day-to-day -day basis, reaching out across the community to pull it together, I think is absolutely vital, and I think it deserves to be properly recognised. So I really wanted to finish by saying thank you for all of that work. During the event, His Holiness also presented Mrs. Sindhutai Sapkal, renowned as a mother of orphans, with the Ahmadiyya Muslim Prize for the Advancement of Peace in recognition of her outstanding efforts to personally alleviate the suffering of more than 1,400 orphaned children and providing them with food, shelter, education, and safety. During his keynote address, His Holiness categorically condemned terrorist groups such as ISIS, Boko Haram, and Al-Shabaab as acting completely against the teachings of Islam and quoted verses of the Holy Quran that refuted all forms of extremism. His Holiness also praised the response of world leaders such as Pope Francis and President Obama following the recent Paris terrorist attacks. In February, the United Nations Security Council unanimously passed a resolution directly targeting the funding of ISIS and ordering sanctions to be levied on any groups who sought to illegal, illegally purchase oil from it or engage in any other form of trade. If this resolution is properly implemented, then, as I have said before, I believe that it will not take years to defeat ISIS, but rather its cruelties can be brought to an end in a matter of months. Recently, a French journalist who had been kept as a prisoner by ISIS for 10 months before being released, spoke about this, uh, his experience, experiences while in captivity. He said that he never saw a copy of the Quran during his entire time as a prisoner of ISIS. And when he asked the terrorists how they justified beheading people and their various other cruelties, they never had any answers. It has been pleasing to see that certain politicians and religious figures have chosen not to add fuel to the fire, 
but have instead made it clear that they do not believe that ISIS or any other terrorist group represent the true teachings of Islam. For example, during a recent speech in Washington, President Obama said very clearly that the terrorists were betraying their religion and had no link with Islam. In January, as I'm sure you will all be aware, terrorists attacked the offices of the magazine Charlie Hebdo in Paris. It was a horrify horrifying attack and completely against the teachings of Islam. When the issue of free speech arose in the days that followed, Pope Francis said, the Pope Francis said that we should not provoke and one another or insult each other's faith. He said that the dignity for, of each faith and religion should be respected and that we should speak for the common good. Both before and after the proceedings, His Holiness met personally with various dignitaries and guests and also met with members of the Western and Asian media. I noticed His Holiness didn't pull any punches, um, but let's hope the politicians that were here go back and speak to their political leaders and take some of that message back to him. We all know what is wrong, how it can happen, or what can happen, but I think um, we in the whole of the world suffer or are under a great threat, but I think the biggest enemy of us is our own apathy and our failure to deal with this situation. A speech by His Holiness setting out his, his view as a faith leader, an important faith leader on um, how we can put in place the foundations of peace. He talked about honesty, integrity, justice. I think those messages are never more relevant than they are today, particularly as we all struggle and discuss how we can confront the extremism. Um, well, if I can go back to right to the beginning of the symposium, the important thing was the quote from the Koran. Uh, that uh, nothing in religion is compulsory. I think that's very important to remember, that we have to tolerate other people's thinkings. It, but there are many roads to God. Well, I would agree with him that what we need to do is to examine the ideological background to persecution of all kinds, but religious persecution in particular. If we get at the ideologies and we stop people thinking in the terms of the... Uh, attacking other communities, then we'll cure the military problem as well. The greatest impression really is the, the commitment of an entire community to do the work that is so clear that they do, you know, the charity work, the, the, um, the integration with, with Britain, um, the, you know, the acceptance of the existence of other beliefs without criticism. It's, it's a fantastic message and I think it's something that everybody should be aware of and, and the fact that His Holiness isn't getting any time on national TV or on world media is it's crazy, quite frankly. Clearly what the Ahmadiyyas have been doing is quite exceptional and I know from my long contact, which goes back over 10 years at least, uh, just how much work the community has been doing in promoting religious harmony and interfaith dialogue. Clearly. It's an example to other groups, particularly within Islam, but where I don't think sometimes that the level of dialogue we need, even at a domestic level, is quite as good as I would like. If you think about how we in this country, in Britain, think about Islam, it's generally negative. Um, and that's not the fault of Islam, that's the fault of the media and, and of course, the, 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 the people that do stupid things like the, the French bombings and so, uh, French killings. The Quran does not say we should do harm to people. And he spoke specifically about some of the verses. And I think, again, for people like me that have had no contact with Islam, it reassures us that, hey, this is, this is not all bad, this is actually good, and it's all in the interpretation. So I think when he quoted from the Quran, it, it, it had quite an impact on me as I started to understand, or like I understood more, that actually Islam isn't bad or isn't good, it's the people who interpret it that put a bad interpretation or good interpretation, and that, that, was, that was the keynote thing for me. So I've always said that the Ahmadis aren't very well known, uh, it's a learning curve for the political class. These kind of events raise the profile of their role both in Britain 
and across the world and it's something which we should know better and we should cherish. The point that I liked the most about the Caliph's speech was the fact that the media is very much pushing you know, the negative aspect of Islam. And uh, today, I mean, I know that anyway, but today I feel very clear that Islam, you know, is a, and the Amadea uh, movement is very much a peaceful movement. And it has nothing to do with what we see in the media or what we hear in the media. I think there's a lot of uh, negative publicity being linked with Islam at the moment. And it was good, His Royal Highness um, actually clearly stated that Islam has nothing to do with the violence and the atrocities that are going on around the globe, particularly what's going on in Iraq and Syria and the recent incidents in Paris recently. What was striking was that basically on our way here we were discussing the same points that he later addressed in his speech. So for example, also the Western influence, the Western interventions, the result in Libya that was is disastrous, the result in Iraq that's a disaster, so that in some way the rise of fundamentalist and extremist groups is related to Western intervention. And that was very interesting that all this, these points came up again in his speech, although, I mean, we had the line on, on these points.